Hey guys and welcome to another quick video. Um, just want to show you this and talk about this a little bit. The Behringer Euphoria UMC1820. It's an 8 in, 10 out, um, 10 analog out, uh, USB audio interface. I, I bought it because I needed an 8 input, 8 output audio interface to do tutorials with. So I just bought the cheapest one I could get, which is this. It cost 160 British pounds, including sales tax. However, when it arrived and I got it out and then tried it, um, I have to say I'm amazed. This thing is incredible. Really good. It looks great, it's well made and it sounds fantastic. So let's just have a quick look at it. Well, in keeping with the normal way these eight in-out audio interface rack type units are designed. The first two inputs are on the front there. An XLR or quarter inch jack inputs and um, Behringer quite heavily feature Midas preamp and Midas, Midas, Midas written everywhere. Um, the preamps are designed by Midas which is a well respected uh, mixer company that Behringer bought about, ooh, what was it, about eight years ago. And they're really good preamps, actually. I was very surprised when I plugged in for the money. Um, they'll take the Pepsi challenge against far more expensive products, I have to say. Okay, so um, there's your first two inputs on the front, the other six around the back. We'll have a look at that in a minute. And let's look down the front. Um, phantom power. Well, at this price, you're not gonna get individual phantom power switching on every input, but what they handily have given you is at least you have the option to either have no phantom power, every input with phantom power, or just the first four or the last four inputs with phantom power with these switches. So you do have the option to use uh, dynamic and um, condenser mics at the same time, which is good. I like that. Okay, uh, next is the actual um, input controls. Input one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Obviously, they're all identical. What have we got? Well, um, if you've plugged a quarter inch jack into the middle big hole of any of the input sockets, you can switch it between line or instrument. Um, instrument allowing you, obviously, to plug guitars, basses straight in to your amp modeling um, software. But handily, they've put a pad switch on every input. You've got a pad. And by the way, these switches have a really nice positive feel. They're not light and flimsy. They feel more like switching a switch on an old console or something. Very nice. Very reassuring pressure they've got. Nice, good click and everything, right? Um, there's your gain control. And rather than implement some half assed little LED ladder input meter, which might have looked nice, but really is next to useless, Instead, they've opted for a simple pair of lamps, clip and sig, which is signal. So basically you plug something in, you increase the gain until you get the sig lamp, the signal lamp flickering, and you've got a input level. If you turn it up too much, the clip lamp starts flashing red, you've overloaded the input, back it off until the clip lamp doesn't flash, even when you sing or play something really loud. And there's your input set. Easy peasy, right? And these pots have got a nice smooth, solid feel I have to say again they feel like a high quality pot the whole thing has got a high quality feel about it I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end so there's your eight input controls and then the master section let's call it let me bring this lamp around a bit the master section starting here with the monitoring thing okay now if I just raise the unit up look it says monitoring if the control pot is turned fully um, counterclockwise, you've got input monitoring, direct input monitoring. If it's can turned all the way clockwise, it's on PB12, playback 12. Now, you when you use an audio interface in the traditional way, you plug in something to a mic or line input, you play it, you put effects on in your door, or you're playing throughout modeling rigs or whatever, you always have, you don't use direct monitoring. You turn that all this way so you've got software through monitoring and you're listening always to the output of the door. 
However, what's really cool is they've added this extra switch here so that you, if you do, for some reason, use input monitoring, you can choose that only input one and two do direct monitoring, or with this switched in, all eight inputs do direct monitoring through to output one, two. And when you do direct monitoring, um, they're always hard panned left, right. So input one will be hard panned left, input two will be hard panned right. And if you've got this switch in and all eight inputs are going through to output one, two, um, then input three will be hard panned left, input four will be hard panned right, input five will be hard panned left, input six will be hard panned right, and input seven will be hard panned left and input eight will be hard pan right. How, but all eight of those inputs will route through to output one, two on the unit, if you do for some reason want to use that. Okay, but when you're using this with a door in the traditional way, you should have it switched that way. And then amazingly, they're giving us a stereo mono switch here, so we can quickly flip to listen to, to a mono left, right out. Very handy. I'm surprised at the price that's included. And that those extra features that you perhaps wouldn't expect at this price continue on with the main output control. Now this controls the volume level coming out of the main out one, two, which is what your door mixer main left, right out is by default routed to. So that's gonna feed your monitor speakers. So this controls your main speakers volume, but they've given us a mute button and a dim. I'm amazed. And, and then we move on to the headphones section, which is brilliant. You've got two headphone sockets, which is a bonus to start with. It means if another musician comes to the studio to do some vocals or playing for you, you each have your own pair of headphones. Fantastic, and with your own volume. However, what's very clever is either headphone feed can take its source as either the main output one, two, which is the main door mix output or you can take an alternative output three four mix which means for example if this had a drummer on it playing to a click track you could set up an alternative uh, output mix on output three four in your door and feed a click track only to that and the drummer hears a click on his or her headphone feed and you're listening on the main one two output and you don't hear that click you can do all sorts of things like that, very handy. Okay, um, here you've got your optical in out switch. Round at the back there is optical in out, which can be switched here between ADAT or when it's out SP diff, and then the optical outputs and inputs function as stereo SP diff or switched in. They carry eight channels in ADAT format. And then finally, it's clever, they've put the indicator lamps here. I mean, the phantom power switches are down the other end, but this is the end of the unit you look at the most. So the lamps are here, which is quite cool, I think. So you've got a power lamp, um, a warning lamp that 48 volt phantom power is on somewhere, um, which is here where you're gonna easily see it. But also they're giving us a midi and out indicator lamp, which is a brilliant bonus. You know, you're pounding away on an old um, MIDI keyboard or controller or something, you, you know, at least this shows you if you're getting signal in out, which is brilliant. I've got to go and check on a MIDI monitor on the door or something like that. Um, okay, and then finally, I know it's not much, but the power switch itself has a really, like if I stop the unit from sliding back, when I apply pressure to switch it on, you have to, or off, it pushes the unit back. It's a really good old fashioned, robust, big power switch. Fantastic, got a really good pressure to it, click on off. And by the way, the whole front panel is covered with one of those plastic films which I haven't peeled off yet, uh, like on a mobile phone or a tablet. So once that's peeled off, you'll have a beautiful gloss black front, which works really well with the sort of slightly off-white text and everything. It's really nicely done. I like the way they've gone for the subdued colours. It's black and ivory white for the lettering and there's this nice aluminium trim around the front and I like the little details like and this is 160 quid this thing right? They could have gone with square corners on the box but no they've put nice beveled curved smooth edges and that is further accentuated by the aluminium trim around the front. These rack ears can easily be unscrewed 
if you don't need them and then that reduces the width of the unit by about an inch and a half each side and then you get this lovely smooth beveled corners it's it's just a nice touch and and things like stainless steel hex bolts for retaining all the XLR sockets it's just it's got a quality feel about it this thing it really does and it weighs a decent weight when you get out of the box it weighs about I don't know 1.1 or 1.2 kilos you get it out and you think oh this is reassuringly heavy like it's got some real electronics in it do you know what I mean and just while we're here although it's not some major feature there are quite big rubber feet underneath now obviously that means it sits on the desk nice but I mention it because it means that you've got about three mil gap for airflow to get underneath the thing which is probably quite useful for keeping it cool anyway it's lovely um, that's the front now let's look at the back with the rest of the connectors and everything so here we are around the back and there's your XLR and line inputs three four five six seven and eight um, again they've got those lovely stainless steel hex bolts retain them in so there's the next six inputs uh, XLR or quarter inch jack and then comes the outputs now these are all quarter inch unbalanced or balanced so you'll wired and balanced on tip ring sleeve but you get 10 outs 10 analog outs you've got your main out left right which is the default that your door mixer main left right out feeds so that's going to power your monitors but on top of that you still have eight more additional line outs which can be very useful if you want to send feeds out to a, a hardware mixer or something like that and you've in effect you could set up eight traditional buses out going to an analog mixer or, or whatever you like and you still have a main monitor out left right brilliant so 10 balanced or unbalanced analog quarter inch outs next we've got the coax sp diff um, in out stereo in out uh, and then the optical in out which can be switched on the front as i showed you between sp diff and adat now both the coax and the optical if it's switched to stereo sp diff these will both do 192k if you want to go that high uh, if the opticals in out here are switched to ADAT then they revert to the traditional ADAT format which is eight channels in eight channels out um, at the traditional ADAT rate which is either 44.1 or 48k and then you've got your MIDI in out again fairly normal to have that on an 18 out USB interface like this but it's just good that they're there. It means you can use any old MIDI kit, set up an external hardware setup to work with your door, or use an old controller that isn't USB that you might have, you know, brilliant stuff. And then finally, there's your USB connector for your computer and the DC socket, but there's another nice touch here. Okay, the DC socket, it's only a, you know, there's an external power supply, and there's the little cable, it's quite thin. Um, They've given us a, a T-bar here to, to wrap the DC lead round before we plug into the socket in case it gets jerked. Then if it's wrapped round here, this will take the pressure if you jerk the lead and it won't pull that socket, which might potentially damage the connection to the circuit board inside. And this is made of metal. It's not cheap plastic. I, I'm, I'm, it's just little touches like that that make this thing sort of seem a lot more expensive than it is i am amazed at the quality of this thing i really am let's put it back around the front again so i was incredibly surprised when i got this thing out first of all it the weight i thought oh it feels you know nicely heavy and it seems and it looks beautifully made and the switches have got a really nice traditional like i said they feel like good quality switches on an old console or something like that and the pots have a nice smooth feel with decent resistance and the preamps sound bloody great they really do um, I plugged a mic in give it a quick go first of all incredibly quiet was the first thing I noticed and beautifully transparent I know it's an overused phrase but you know it's sort of a, a nice transparent sort of clean quality but they have weight is the best way I can describe it yeah very nice indeed 
Um, it's just really nicely made and I love its understated quality. I mean, I've got a Scarlet Solo up there and it's, you know, got the traditional Scarlet red box and fairly bright colours on the indicators and things. And it's great. It's a great unit. I actually think the Pre's sound better than this, to be honest. Um, but, you know, the Scar I like, just like the understated design quality of this. Like The Scarlet is sort of like a, a Vauxhall hot hatchback or a Renault hot hatch designed for 20 year olds you know it's it's garish it's bright it goes like stink you know but whereas this is a bit more sort of audi do you know what i mean like understated black and a uh, bit of aluminium trim and nice ivory lettering and the switches feel reassuringly high quality and things like that yeah i, I i'm just ranting on about it a bit but i'm just so bloody surprised Fantastic stuff, absolutely brilliant. So uh, yeah, there it is. Now I'm not gonna bother doing audio examples. This unit's been out for quite a long time, about three or four years. So there's endless people on YouTube and on web pages doing recordings, comparing this to usually much higher priced um, preamps if you want to hear the quality of the preamps there's plenty of demos out there a being it against other devices uh, but just finally to say this is a I mean at the price 160 quid including sales tax it's a no-brainer okay so if you've got a little project room where you your band setup is for rehearsing get one of these plug it into a laptop add a few mics and you can start doing band recordings eight inputs is plenty to get a good drum sound down you can get good drums with six inputs. One for the kick, one for the snare, two for the overheads, and that'll get you a great drum sound. But if you want, you could add um, a mic on the hi-hat. You could add one or two mics on the overheads, toms, you know, whatever, the hanging toms, whatever you want. So you can do band recordings with a device like this, and then you overdub the additional things, the vocals, guitar, solo, backing vocals, any other extra stuff, uh, overdub it by layering extra tracks on top. But this will get your drums down as long as well as bass and rhythm guitar or something, right? Um, but once you got this for, as I said, a measly 160 quid, if you then decide, well, actually, it'd be great to have more mic inputs, well, fine. You just go out and buy a Behringer ADA 8200, one of these. And this is basically a rack unit with eight more Midas preamps, which connects to this unit with ADAT. And then to sync them, you just use a button on the ADA 8200. There's no faffing around in software, setting things up. You just use the button on the ADA 8200 to decide whether this or the ADA is the master unit, and then they're synced. And then when you go to your door, you'll have 16 mic inputs. Now, <laughs> the ADA 8200 is 115 British pounds, for God's sake. And this is 160 street price. The two together is two less than 280 quid. And you've got 16 Midas preamps to record your band. I mean, man, it's a no brainer because that's just under 280 quid, which is the price of most audio interfaces that are decent to this quality. As I said, again, from the likes of, you know, Focusrite, uh, Personas, Tascam, people like that. Anyway, brilliant stuff. The Behringer UMC 1820. 10 out of 10. I'm just stunned by this. For the money, it's utterly bloody ridiculous. Anyway, there you go. I hope that's useful, and I will see you for another video soon.